is oh, <laughs> well, water baptismal regeneration is a heresy. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'll go first on that one. Okay. Uh, well, we know it's a heresy. Uh, the, the scripture is really quite uh, clear that uh, the the one and only requirement for salvation uh, is uh, faith or believing in uh, the person and finished work and promise of Christ. So uh, uh, water baptism is something that we uh, all agree that this is something that every believer should do after they come to faith, they should do it. And the main reason, two reasons are, first, we're told to get baptized, but we're also, um, it's the first best opportunity we'll ever have to uh, share the gospel, even before we are really equipped necessarily. As some people, they're not comfortable sharing the gospel until they've studied and practiced and everything, but but uh, you can share the gospel right after you get saved, even if you're just a babe and don't know a whole lot. Uh, uh, you, because when you get water baptized and you invite all your family and friends, it's like it's like it's not unusual to invite everybody to some event in your life, like your graduation or your baptism. So you can invite them all. And during the baptism, if it's done correctly, the gospel is presented and the baptism is a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and you dying and rising again in the new birth. So uh, if that's explained during the water baptism, you're able to share the gospel with all your friends and family through that. So uh, it, it should be done. Uh, if you never get water baptized, it does not change your standing. Your salvation is already secured through your faith. Uh, but uh, now... There are uh, churches and uh, many uh, sects of Christianity to today that uh, uh, believe water baptism is a necessity. You're not saved unless you get wet. Um, uh, the, the Pentecostals, Church of Christ, uh, many others, they believe in uh, wa water is necessary. And this is called, uh, theologically, the term for it is baptismal regeneration. Uh, just like the Pentecostals don't believe that you actually got the Holy Spirit until you speak in tongues and have that experience, uh, they also would believe that you do not get regenerated and the Holy Spirit does not enter you until you get wet. Uh, and now there's another opposing group. Remember I said earlier that every theological subject, there's uh, the correct answer, and then there's extremes this way and extremes that way. So we have that with water baptism. The opposite of the baptismal general regeneration view uh, is the hyper dispensational view, and they believe that water baptism is is really forbidden. That that we should no one should get water baptized, uh, and it's, they forbid it in their teaching. Uh, so, uh, the, the, so the correct view is it doesn't save you, uh, it, but it should not be forbidden. It should be encouraged, but it's not a requirement. Uh, however. I will say that I've done a lot of study of church history and the early church, so-called church fathers, and uh, the heresy of water uh, baptismal regeneration and the sacraments of the, the Eucharist, uh, the, the, the Catholic view on a communion and water baptism, those things uh, became uh, doctrinal positions as early as the beginnings of the second century. So almost immediately following the death of all the apostles, the next generation of church leaders started introducing these heresies into the church. And then, of course, it was adopted uh, by Roman Catholicism when that was fully developed. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Renee or, or Jordan, are you, what do you say? Jordan, you go ahead if you want. Okay, because I literally have a fire burning in me right now. <laughs> I literally, before I started with Church of the Eternally Secure, I sent them a 30-page document about this topic that I wrote. Uh, here are the groups, if you guys are affiliated with them, associated with them in any way, or know somebody who is. Either leave, direct them elsewhere, Message me, we'll find a Bible-believing church, but get away from the International Church of Christ, um, the Church of Christ itself, International Christian Church, 
Roman Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, some branches of Charismatics, and of course, like, just in general, any 1800 cult. But people really, really, really twist a lot of verses, you know, we have Mark 16, 16, Acts 2, 38, Acts 10, 60, or, oh goodness, 10, 22, I believe, uh, 1 Peter 3, 21. There are so many times that um, baptism is mentioned, but what people don't realize is there are seven different types of baptisms in the Bible. So the burden of proof is on these organizations to be able to say that this is referring to water baptism. We know that the baptism that saves is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. <sighs> How can I make this as short as possible? <laughs> First of all, the one thing I want to say that people really don't seem to get, and you guys will probably hear me say this a lot because it's just a point that people overlook. Acts is a transitional book. It teaches historically what Romans through five Lehman teaches doctrinally. The what is occurring at the beginning of Acts is not the same as what's occurring at the end of Acts. We are seeing a transition from the old covenant to the new covenant, from Jews to Gentile, from Israel to the church, from uh, dealing with a nation to dealing with individuals, from uh, this. Uh, uh, there's so many different transitions. I could just go on and on, but it's important to realize that the first Gentile wasn't even saved until Acts 10. We have a proselyte that's um, converted a little bit before that, but that's a proselyte. That's a Jewish convert. So, and that would be the Ethiopian eunuch. So I say that to bring context that we should not be pulling doctrine from a history book. What is happening in Acts 2.38, which is the go-to, there are people who die with this Bible verse on their tombstone. When our gospel for today is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, um, what happens when we place our trust in Jesus Christ? We are baptized by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our baptizer who baptizes us into the body of Christ. We are, we are baptized into his life, death, burial, and resurrection. That is the spiritual baptism. In Acts 2.38, when Peter says, repent and be baptized, repent from what? He is talking to Jews, the Jews who just crucified their Messiah. And they're like, oh my goodness, we just crucified the Messiah. What do we do now? It's like, repent so he will come back and be baptized, similar to what John the Baptist was doing the first time Jesus came. But you'll notice that Peter, not until Acts 11, well, technically Acts 10, but he doesn't say that he recounts it until Acts 11. He's like, oh, now I remember Jesus said, John indeed baptized you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And what happened at Pentecost, despite what Pentecostals are telling you today, we are not going to have an ongoing Pentecost. That was a very unique moment. And what happened there was Jesus was the baptizer baptizing the world with the holy spirit he was pull, pouring the holy spirit out and that was pentecost now the holy spirit's ministry has begun on this earth and those who place their faith in jesus christ and jesus christ alone are now baptized into his body and part of that's also the circumcision of the heart and that's something that i always preach um against these groups is, okay, well, if water baptism was a necessity, why aren't we being circumcised? Because the two are put together often. And, oh, I'm getting, so, there's so many points I'm trying to spit out right now. If y'all want more details about this, hit me up. I'm so passionate. But we have to remember times like, when example, when Paul's talking to the Corinthians, he says, God sent me to preach the gospel, not to baptize. Baptism's not part of the gospel. It's right there in scripture. And there's so many other occurrences like this. I'm just, I pulled out a couple of quick notes here. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I really, I really don't think I have time to get into that. But um, I do want to touch on this topic more so in depth. But I know that on Sunday, we have a couple of questions about acts coming up. So I think that I'll dive into it there. But I will just leave it with one of these very sad stories. This is what preaching baptismal regeneration does. 
I had a kid who was from the Church of Christ talk to me not too long ago, and he, I said, do you trust in Jesus Christ alone? And he said, yeah. And I was like, well, let me ask you this question. If you put your full faith in Jesus Christ and you were driving to your water baptism and you died in a car crash, would you go to heaven or hell? And he said, I don't know. And I told him that you do not trust in Jesus Christ alone. And what Luke was alluding to about, because this is what you'll hear too, the, oh, the early church fathers agreed with it. First of all, not all of them did. Uh, actually, oh, help me out. I think it was Tertullian that actually preached against it. But uh, don't quote me on that. But um, what we have to remember is that the church, even during the time of the apostles, were fighting against heresies getting into the church. We can't assume that they had the communication that we have today. Like, People only had access to the scriptures by going to the church, and they only had limited letters. Look at Moses. It, he only had to walk up the mountain five minutes for the entire nation that was just delivered out of slavery from Egypt to turn to a different God. It does not take people long to fall into apostasy. But if baptism is absolutely one of the most beautiful things you can do. It is not only a representation of an internal rep. Um, regeneration, but you are declaring to the physical and the spiritual world who you belong to now. So I don't discourage anyone from getting baptized, and it's one of the most beautiful things. And my church actually didn't preach baptism and its importance. The Holy Spirit actually convicted me to be baptized. I had no idea how significant or important it was. But notice who convicted me to be baptized. The Holy Spirit. I was saved. That's I'll have to cap it right there because I could go on. <laughs> All right. Just remember, there's you, 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 we get follow-up time, too. So you know, <laughs> you're going to be able to say more after we hear from Renee, okay? Go yeah, ahead, I, Renee. I felt it was it was important for him uh, to answer this. Um, yeah, he's got a 30-page essay on this. He's got a lot to say on it. The, the, the Jews understood water baptism. They understood what that, it was mikvah baths. It was a representation of being ritually clean so that kind of language to the jews would have made sense for them it means a conversion right that that would have been understood by them and so you see a lot of that language during the uh, early apostles when he's still dealing with the nation of israel um i too am all for water baptism it is the first act of obedience and water by uh, um, baptism by immersion represents that we died, we were buried, and rose up again out of the tomb with Jesus. It is a beautiful symbol. But like my pastor says, his wedding ring is the symbol that he is married. If he takes his ring off, is he not married? Does he is he stop being married because his ring's gone? No, it is a symbol of it. It's the same thing with water baptism. Are you not saved if you don't do the ritual that represents your baptism into Christ? Of course not. So when Paul says there's one faith, one baptism, one baptism, it's got to be the Holy Spirit baptism. As Jordan pointed out, he said, I didn't come to baptize, but to preach the gospel. See, the the Jewish converts were putting a lot of emphasis on who baptized them. And they were splitting off into factions. I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. So he made it clear that his purpose was to get people saved, not to baptize. So when Paul says there's one baptism, one faith, the baptism into Christ, that's what I want to know. What is the baptism that puts me, people don't mean what baptize means. To be baptized into Christ is by the Holy Spirit. The seed of Christ in us is the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but the one who comes after me, he will baptize you with Holy Spirit and then with fire. But he was talking to the lost people there. So to me, when we go to Hebrews and see the list of dead works, Baptism is one of them. We don't put faith in dead works like 
baptisms and laying on of hands and, and, and the fundamentals. These are things that symbolize other things. So uh, it's clear the thief on the cross, you know, I've heard some of the most ridiculous arguments. Oh, well, he probably got baptized in John's baptism. Doesn't matter because we see in another place in scripture where John's baptism does not save. It does not give you the Holy Spirit because they were asked, do you have the Holy Spirit? We have not heard of such a thing as the Holy Spirit. By what baptism were you baptized? John's. Okay, then that doesn't give you the Holy Spirit. So it doesn't matter if he was baptized by John and which probably not because he was an unbeliever when he was crucified, yet he was a believer before he died while he was still on the cross next to Jesus. All he did was proclaim he knew he was king. He recognized who he was and he put his faith in him. He didn't have time to change his life. And but, you know, you hear all these things. Well, he, he was willing to do. You know what? It, it's not of him that willeth or of him that runneth, but of God who showeth mercy. It is all what Jesus did. If the word you or you got to is in the gospel, it's wrong. The gospel message is the message of what God has done for man to reconcile him to himself. And you either believe he did that or you do not. So although water baptism is wonderful, it's beautiful, it's an act of obedience, a public proclamation, it's a symbol of us being baptized into Christ, it's, it's beautiful. I stand for it. I, I'm all for it. But if you're putting trust in that water to regenerate you, it's not magic water. You're regenerated by the Spirit. Jesus said you must be born again, born of the Spirit. That is how you're saved, not by water. And I think this is one of Satan's greatest tricks to make people think that if they dunk themselves in water, they're somehow a new creature. You're a new creature in Christ, not because you got wet.